we raised so many points in our last video that we almost had to toss a coin and think, which one will we follow? Yes. Um, so we, we've decided uh, yes. to discuss uh, from the uh, position of um, examiner and yes. a Stedford judge, competition yes. judge, and someone who's done a lot of exams and the steppers and yes. compositions yes. <laughs> competition so uh the uh, yeah. the judge and the victim <laughs> yeah this book here confident music performance i actually wrote after a stint examining in country towns coastal queensland and it's very prescient you have to get yourself to the airport get there you're in a hire car trying to read in those days it was tiny little photocopied maps now we do have satellite now but it used to be so stressful getting there on time and finding the venue and then you've got to run absolutely on time and if somebody has a an asthma attack or something um that you know the meltdown that they they just can't go on you're losing time you're losing time then we might have the person who thinks they can have second try or third try at scales and you try that in a, a chromatic scale and you're losing already two minutes and you'll notice the schedule says 8.59 until 9.05 or something well that's a bit short uh, they have to play fast until 9.15 so you have um, an excerpt from your books regarding yes. um, competitions and what you tell yes. your students yes. uh, when they because sure. uh, and it took me a long time as someone who who's done um, a lot of competitions and uh, and won, yeah. well, um, and but not necessarily but not necessarily and and also have, have not won and uh, yes um, is that uh, an exam and a competition yes. is a shot in time it's just a it's just a single point Ooh. in time and uh, it's not that you're better than the next person it's yes. just that in that particular point in time you played like that and in that particular point in time this adjudicator or um, uh, um, ju judge um, or uh, examiner thought about what your playing was yes that point in time yes it is true and Going to the competitions, because a lot of my students are about to have their chance at Stedford's. And I do try to take the pressure off by saying, I'm proud of you, whatever happens, if you've gone in, you've practiced, prepared, presented, and you've done your best, I'm proud of you. If you get a place, that's the icing on the cake. And I try to defuse that, oh, I've got to win. But as an adjudicator myself, I've built up a system over the years where I'll be making highlights on potential winners and pretty quickly dismissing ones that aren't going to get there yeah. at all. Because and, there are some yeah. things that uh, uh, you know, adjudicators can say that um, can be quite um, damaging yes. to uh, oh, yes. the student. Um, when I was at the Royal College of Music, um, I found that everybody was really, really tough on me. Yeah. Uh, although they were probably really, really tough on everyone. Yes. But um, <clears throat> this wasn't a competition. It was um, a performance um, in the main auditorium at the Royal College of Music. Yes. And I was playing the Weber Grand Duo Concertat. Yes. Which for me is a show off piece. Yes. <laughs> and I and I, I showed it off. You know, when, when I was uh, when I was uh, I did a uh, competition in um, America, uh, the International Clarinet Association uh, Young Artists, uh, and I came second. Um, <clears throat> uh, one person said, "Gee, you really, really sell the piece." And I think it was the um, it was probably the Sudermeister. Uh, but anyway, so here is who is here is brash young me, you know, freshly, um, you know, bachelor of, bachelor of music, first class honours, um, first intake Australian National Academy of Music, AYO, QSO, and yeah, here I was, I thought, you know, I was hot stuff, and uh, <laughs> gee, did I get cut down quickly? Yes. But I was quite, and you know, for me, Weber, you know, he's a he's a show off. 
And the, the Weber Grand Duo was a show off both for the, the clarinetist and the pianist. I have and a I, wicked, wicked idea about this. And I uh, <laughs> I would love to have the curtains parted, uh, the curtains drawn, and the piano player starts. Wouldn't that be fun to do? <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, so I, I, you know, I, I was young, I was brash. Um, as in previous videos, um, I used to move a lot. And um, I sold the heck out of this piece. I really, I really went, yes. uh, you know, the. And uh, there weren't adjudicators, but there were. Um, people who evaluated your public performance and I was absolutely crushed to hear that um, I played with um, sort of Hollywood glitz and glamour <laughs> and gets worse Hollywood glitz and glamour which cheapened the performance well I think the nearest I can come to that is that I played Weber which Weber concertino maybe I forget mm for a master's recital mm. and one of the examiners thought I overplayed it. Hey, we must have something in common. <laughs> no, we don't. Going, this is romantic music. This is our equivalent well, of I, I would uh, yeah. How could we overplay Weber? Well, you see, the thing is though, Weber is still All a little right. bit classical. All right. But, um, <clears throat> And actually, if you played it on a clarinet that was around at the time, <laughs> you would realise how hard it is because I've just I'm oh, by I, I've got your I've got your 1840 clarinet yes. and uh, um, while I can play uh, Lefebvre, yes, uh, I didn't want to do Weber on it. You're right. No, uh, even though it was actually made after. Yes. Good point. <laughs> and actually, I heard um, I heard a clarinetist. Uh, do the Weber two on a classical oh, clarinet uh, with QSO? I don't think he had the G sharp key either, because <laughs> your 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 clarinet has ten keys, whereas the other, the like the the post Mozart sure. clarinet yeah. probably only had about five. Yes. Uh, one two. I don't think it had G sharp. Probably didn't have the the B no. natural either. It just had the um, the E flat and yeah. the B and B and the C. Oh, some of those comments and gradings can be really tough. As an adjudicator, the ones that I think, no, it's not cutting it, I would put, say, around the top 70s, early 80s, and I'll put them to one side. The ones that are possibles, I'll keep to another side with a highlight against them. But then you get to the second last one, and you've got six could possibly win. And you're praying for somebody to stand up. This is this is what this is what we want. Yes. The tips. The is tips. as as an adjudicator and as an examiner, uh -huh. what are you looking for? Uh -huh. What are you you're looking, looking for? for? Musicianship and a quick fix way, and it's not hard, is to exaggerate the dynamics. I hate it when pieces start piano. All my students get that crossed out or covered up and mezzo forte also, because your first impression has got to be, listen to me, duh, I am sequentious. And then exaggerate, if you've got a higher piano, then your fortissimo has to be very fortissimo, and so on. So, But not too far, no, too not fortissimo, so much too because I, I was a, at a master class yeah. in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, yes. And uh, Philippe Pear was uh, was on the um, panel of the, with the master class, and uh, I was playing the the Rega first sonata. Yeah. I, I love Rega. Uh, I've recorded all three of his um, sonatas, and I've also played his quintet. She's a busy lady. Oh yes, yes. Uh, available on my channel, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, when you're on Kathy's channel, hop over to mine. <laughs> but um, what uh, what Philippe? said was that no don't because Rager goes mm. from triple P to triple F yeah. but he said with the triple F don't play the triple F play it as the memory of the triple F that's interesting yes interesting yeah. but, so but, this is so these are so these are the tips because yeah. I've, I've had to, um, in my you know extensive um, experience of being on the, the other end the uh, the yes. competitor yes. and yeah 
uh, and doing the exam, um, I heard a couple of uh, horror stories actually the other week from a clarinet player. Um, there was uh, two, two examples. One was the, a cellist um, in a string competition. Yes. And um, this, this particular cellist was probably playing a grade three piece. Yes. But they played it flawlessly, they played it effortlessly, they played it musically. It was absolutely beautiful. The problem was that they didn't win because there were a number of um, other students who taught, were taught the Suzuki method and absolutely hacked at the strings. But, yes. but I, and then there was a, a, another example where um, uh, this, this clarinetist, I think, 14-year-old clarinetist, again, played absolutely beautifully, expressively, musically. And, um, and, the, uh, um, and unfortunately lost to, you know, flashing lost fingers and, and, and quit. Oh, that's sad. But the trouble is it's only one competition, one exam. One point in time. One point in time. And mm -hmm. the thing is, I often kind of almost laugh at myself and say, I know it's so difficult because am I going to give it to somebody who played lots of those? When you've got an estate for where it's all woodwind and brass all in together, for some reason or other, flautists can play more notes quicker than clarinetists can. And so they go, <laughs> lots of notes. And then a clarinetist might come in and play a challenging piece, but it's not as flashy. But often, I can remember giving a first to somebody who played a simple piece with heart. And what was interesting was uh, when uh, I uh, <clears throat> re-entered the clarinet society competition sort of in my late 20s, having yes. won it when I was 23. Um, and <clears throat> um, they changed the rules the year after. But in this particular competition, um, I played clarinet and E-flat. And um, <coughs> I played um, some Donizetti, Florid, <laughs> Cavatini, or was it Rossini or something? Yeah. Um, I played them. I played them. I played them quite well. Um, and then I played um, Carnival of Venice on E flat clarinet. On E flat. Okay. On E flat. That would be. Fun. And um, and I totally agree. Uh, I totally agree with the exam with the um, the judge. Okay. Uh, because she said, is it better for someone to play a less hard piece perfectly or someone that has plays an incredibly hard piece and um, Although, does, it, does it, it makes a lot of sense. Can I, can I put in here, in both these books, mm. um, I've written, please don't try to be perfect, that is the biggest single cause of nerves. Because nobody can be perfect this side of the grave. Aim for musical, to use your God-given gifts to the best of your abilities, to to express what the composer wanted, all those sort of things. And but, what was the, uh, the, the book, the, the Something Guide to Tennis or something? Oh yes, um, The Inner Game of Tennis. Inner Game of Tennis. What, and I, I actually read The Inner Game of Music. Yes. And what really helps me, not just in music, yes. but uh, also in my driving exam actually, <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, you just got to allow yourself to fail. <laughs> well, Yes, and not be so tough on ourselves. Because, because like so I could spend, I could spend forty-five minutes at a time on those four bars, yes. you know, and 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 it won't happen in the um, and it, you know, I won't get it right in the performance. And yes. and actually, I I'm allowed myself to fail. I, I I don't want to be a professional musician. I you know, and what's well, interesting is I uh, too. We don't have all that much repertoire to keep broad-based minds busy. Well, I was I was playing. Um, uh, um, and also, there are better things to do than practicing yeah. six hours a day, especially when you live in sunny Queensland. <laughs> and and you've got and you've got Facebook and, and so is allowing yourself to fail. So um, I recently played uh, with Queensland Baroque uh, yeah. on recorder, uh, Bach Brandenburg Four, uh, and this is the original version in uh, G major, which um, <coughs> has to be the scariest start. For a second recorder player oh, yes. in the, well, actually no, it's the second scariest. Uh, the uh, the Telemann 
um, the, the Telemark double concerto for recorder and um, bassoon is scarier because you start on the top F, um, which is uh, about the second top note. But the, the Bach Brandenburg um, starts with the second recorder play and it's above the staff, B, D, G, in an in arpeggio going up and down. And, it's, and it goes, <laughs> that has to be the scariest start ever. That's right. I don't know when you tell, <laughs> but, but articulation is a lot easier on, on a recorder. But having to hit. because there's a helicopter going. Actually, you didn't notice that, did you? No, because I was so focused. So, but anyway, having to hit the top. So, uh, <clears throat> so you're starting here, dum, bum, beep. So you're going from a D to a top G. Yep, up, 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 at, at that speed, but um, there were um, there was this really really hard bit, and you know I could have um, and I and I practiced it and I practiced it and I practiced it, and I realised I probably wasn't going to get into the performance. But and the interesting thing when you um, when you record yourself, yes. you know, and you know that bit comes up and you, you it just and this is why uh, in my in my driving exam. Uh, I think the first thing I had to do was reverse park. I can't reverse park. And so I once I failed, once I didn't do that, I continued on with the rest of the exam. Relax that. Whatever. Relax that. And I passed. And I, and I passed. And I passed. Because, because you he gave said, yourself permission to fail. That's, mm, the that's the difference. And the thing, I talk in both these books um, a lot. They're both half price on my website. I'm trying to clear stock because I've got more reasons. <laughs> um, the, the thing is to give yourself permission to be yourself as you are in that point in time and also, if necessary, to fail. But I have this concept of right and left brain that I talk a lot of in my workshops and my books. And it's sometimes I'll say to students before an exam or a competition, turn off the, turn off the too hard button. It's a mythical button. A bit like, you know, the Indian dot. Turn off your too hard button. And that immediately frees them to be what they are capable of being. And you know, but please do not do not watch Hollywood movies about musicians. <laughs> there's oh, um, there's a, a uh, there's a recent do that in yes, there, there's a there's a recent movie which um, is not PG, it's a, it's a horror movie that's pretty good. It's called The Perfection. And if you make one mistake, oh, I don't, I can't, I can't tell you on a PG program. But yeah, so please, you know, do yes. not, because uh, uh, you know, having worked with uh, professional musicians, and um, and they, they, um, they tend not to record themselves or have any recordings of themselves because they don't want to be seen as sure. And mistakes. I say to people, don't watch a recording of, in my case presentations or performances too soon after because you're still very sensitized actually i find that's the best thing oh. it, it, it's because you know i record yes. um all of my concerts um and i listen to the audio first and actually i think well that actually wasn't so bad oh, I think, see, because you can you can sort of blow up in your mind it's like oh that bit that i practiced 10 billion gazillion times and no and it didn't work oh. but when you think about it no 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 you know the, you know the, the mistake you made you know here but, yes but this and this was spectacular so but what's the, the audience going to remember if you're in a performance, you go away remembering, oh my gosh, I made a mistake there, and you remember that, and yet you played 9,722 notes, which were fantastic, and you remember the four that worked. Yeah. And the other thing is, I say to people, you're in an exam, it used to be you'd see the pen scratching, now it's the computer with going on, and so you, you make a mistake and you think, oh, she's writing, oh, oh mistake in bar 17, and it might be. Oh, what beautiful expressive tone, what a wonderful shaping of melodic lines, smooth legato, beautiful sound. Why do we think the worst of ourselves? It, it's interesting because I um, did um, a um, licentiate diploma with um, Trinity College London 
and uh, got um, at that stage was the highest ever mark yes. Yes. of 96 yeah. um, percent. And I probably, true, <laughs> I probably, I probably would have got 98 or 99 yes. percent, but um, the uh, particular examiner thought didn't like Mitchell Lee's shirt. Thought Mitchell looked a bit happy. I actually lost my heart because of Mitchell's shirt. <laughs> But um, better not leave that in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I, I, I think I will. I think I will because I'm not naming the examiner. But that that's actually what was written. That's actually what was written on on in the examination oh. sheet was. Uh, but um, uh, the thing is, um, I wasn't happy with a few of the, the pieces. But uh, the guy said, you know, even the the, the performance was not without mistakes. Yes. But yes, you know the. Uh -huh. And that that, um, that particular exam was interesting because I had to actually take it twice because um, I got through most of it and my last pièce de résistance was of course said Weber Grandio Contratant, yes. you know my party piece. And uh, what happened during the original exam was one of my uh, one of my um, <laughs> springs. Oh, no. sprung. Oh, yeah. I think it was my I think it was my you were A to, too hard. I think I think it was my A to G sharp kick, so I actually had to come back a few days later and finish it off. And he didn't even bother writing anything oh. down because he was so impressed, you know. I mean this is this is my he, he, he sat he sat back like this had a ball. <laughs> and I go although uh, the next year I was surpassed by one of my mother in law students who got a ninety seven. Obvious, but uh, obviously he didn't have the happiness that wore a shabby shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Mitchell, I, I love you. you. Um, I'm going to face up here. We have this filthy hot weather in November or whatever. Oh, any any time uh, that's not in um, June, July, and August is basically hot. Oh, no, no, actually, it's very equable here in Brisbane. Um, <laughs> no, we just not. don't want to be performing November. December, January. Oh, so believe me, even March. <laughs> yeah, this was, um, I think now I come to remember a Trinity Letters, and I was playing the Mozart, the Mozart, mm. and that F that you finish on was so out of tune. <laughs> and so I thought I would do a, uh, as if to say, I'm trying, I'm yeah. trying to get it in tune. And the examiner didn't have a sense of humour. He didn't read my body language, he didn't understand. No, I, didn't. Oh, I just couldn't believe that. But I really want to stress one thing though. If you're doing exams, now I'm behind the desk, could you please make sure you know your scales? Because there is nothing worse to put the examiner's teeth on edge than to think you can stand on one foot and have another try at a chromatic scale and just look at it this way, there's a lot of notes in a chromatic scale. If you want another try or two, then that examiner is running late and is likely to be, to be <laughs> looking at their watch and going, oh, I've got a plane to catch at 5.27 <laughs> and that will not endear yourself. If you want an examiner to think you're the best, you might Think a few seconds before you start, think the key signature, the leading note, etc. Take a moment, and I tell my students, if you get F sharp minor melodic, which you didn't want to play, or G sharp minor melodic, um, take a moment to think, play twice as loud equals conviction, and even twice as slow equals think time, but also the adrenaline's pumping, we're probably talking thinking faster than we need. If you take it slower, you may not be as slow as you think. And it's better to have tick, 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 and the comment at the bottom, scales were accurate, but could have been faster. And that's one of my hot tips.